It's Christmas Day. Finally, it might not be how we quite expected it, but nonetheless, the day is finally here. This week, as I've just been working, um, I've just been talking to some mates and I've just been seeing what they'll be up to for Christmas and those surrounding days. And it became clear that each family seems to have their own traditions, these set structures for Christmas Day. Yet there seems to be this common thread across them all, which is board games and party games. As soon as December hits, as soon as Christmas comes around the corner, these are just popping up all over the place. And this was just this common thread across all family traditions. And I'm not sure about you, but me personally, you're going to say, Aaron, what's your favourite? What's your favourite game? I'm probably going to lean towards hide and seek, but in the dark. I, 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 I don't need to justify myself. I just feel, what, what can be better? What can be better than a game of hide and seek in the duck? And a couple of years ago, we were, did it as a family. The cousins were around um, and there was eight of us. And we were like, the perfect time. Let's play hide and seek in the duck. So that's exactly what we did. One counted, seven scattered all over the house scurrying about looking for those best hiding spots and one by one they were found until their eighth person was left unfound. He had vanished. No one knew who he, where he was and this person was my dad and my dad by no means is petite. He had disappeared. He'd absolutely vanished. No one could find the guy. And eventually, after much searching, with a bit of a sweat on our brow, we finally found him. He was under my bed, and I'll try and describe my bed to you. Basically, it's closed off on each side with wood. And to get underneath, you need to raise the mattress, and then raise these wooden boards underneath the mattress, and then slip in underneath. It's a bit of a hassle to get under there, but somehow he'd managed to slide his way into the, under there and won the game of hide and seek in the dark. He was there in the middle of it all, but he was in that place of unexpectedness. I guess we just had to look. And there's this other story, this story of Jesus and his birth, where he was also not in the place which was quite expected in this unexpected place. And I'm just going to give you a little context of the story just before his birth. So basically, the emperor at the time, he said, right, I want this census to be done, which is basically this collection of information. So it's going to require you to go back to your ancestral homes to fulfill it. So Joseph was like, right, I'm in the line of David, King David, so I'm going to have to go to, back to his hometown, which was Bethlehem. And he's at Nazareth. And Nazareth to Bethlehem is some trek, I'm not going to lie to you. So he was like, right, I want a little bit of company. Mary, my fiance, you fancy joining us? Nice quality time. So they went along from Nazareth to Bethlehem. They went on that long journey together. And Mary at this time, wow, she was pregnant. She was pregnant. Couple months on beginning to come quite obvious and, and by the time they got there, as they were there, the time came for the Messiah to be born. The time came for the baby to be born. This, this is the moment, this is a point of culmination, this is the start of a time which the whole Old Testament had been pointing towards. This is the time the Messiah, the Saviour, their Lord would finally come and would lead them to independence, that they may be a mighty nation once again. That the people of God would not only be saved from their oppressors, but from themselves and their own sins. But people had different expectations of what the Messiah was going to look like. And to illustrate this point, I thought we would play the beloved Pointless. We seem to have a, almost a tradition at Hope Church on the Christmas Day service where we need to tie in some TV show or some game show. So I thought, why let the tradition go? This year, we shall do Pointless. We've had X Factor, The Chase, even Deal or No Deal. But this year, the beloved Pointless. And the question shall be, who will the Messiah 
B. Now I've got some contestants involved and they need to guess the most unexpected answer to this question. Who will the Messiah be to get that perfect, that flawless, pointless answer? So to my first contestants, I come to the Davies family. And my question to you is, who will the Messiah be? So do we agree? A political military leader. A political military figure. Not too... Not too bad of an answer, but 86, I mean, come on, not quite there, not quite there at all. Right, we're going to come to our next contestants, the Budwells. The Budwells, Cal and Wendy. My question to you is the same. Who will the Messiah be? We reckon High Priest. Oh, oh. no. You two, a high priest. Nice answer, but not that pointless answer we're looking for. 64, mm, I mean, I feel we can go lower. So I'm going to come to my next contestants. We'll see how they do. And my question to Natasha, Antonio and Glenn, my question to you is, who will the Messiah be? I think our answer would have to be a king in the line of David. Fair enough. <laughs> 49, we're getting lower, we're getting lower. Right, I'm coming to the DeCostas, Ni Rose, Nicole and Caleb. My question to you is the same. Who will the Messiah be? Hmm. Hmm. I think that's a hard one. Yeah, I'm going to go with... A prophet like Moses. Hmm. Oh. 32. Oh, we're getting lower, but it's not quite that pointless, that flawless answer. Yes, Jesus was every single one of these things. But he wasn't quite as they expected him to come. He was the pointless answer. And this was the answer. He came and was born in the dirt and then grew up to serve. In Luke 2.7, Mary is given birth to Jesus and she's wrapping him in this cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them anywhere else. And this Messiah, this saviour that had been so anticipated came in the most unanticipated way. The king of glory, born in the dirt, taking on the human limitations to be with us. No one saw that coming. He wasn't born in a fancy schmancy palace, let alone a house, in not even a nice house, but in a manger, an animal feeding trough, literally in the dirt. No one saw that coming. He was in the unexpected. A month or maybe two ago, we were in Limitless Youth and we were talking about listening to God. And we went into breakout rooms to discuss this question. What stops us hearing from God? What are those limitations? So in our breakout rooms, we were discussing this question. And then we came back to the main room and we were giving feedback. And breakout room three, the eldest group, were just reeling off some good stuff. They were reeling off some good stuff. And then Natasha, the group leader, she went to Sam, and Sam's my brother. And she was like, Sam, um, do, you, do you mind just um, sharing what you said in there? And Sam was like, yeah, sure. And he may be my brother, so I may be a little bit biased, but I think what he said was a little bit profound. And this is what he said. I think our expectations can stop us hearing from God. Profound, huh? But I don't think it's just limited to us listening to God, which our expectations can limit. When maybe we expect things to go our way, 
for us to get that next promotion, to sell the house, for us to go for a whole school term without being sent home to self-isolate, where maybe we'd have expected all of this to be over by now, where maybe we expected Jesus to be born in a fancy schmancy palace. We actually miss Jesus as he's born in the dirt, as he's born and is in those unexpected places. We miss him as we allow our expectations to shape our reality. So let's not miss him in the unexpected. Pete Gregg expands on this um, in the prayer course, and he's talking about having ears to hear. And um, he says something really interesting, that there would have been people actually on the earth at that time who saw and heard Jesus, yet they missed him. And we literally see this as Jesus grows up um, and goes into the public sphere. Um, And Jesus, like the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they saw Jesus do miracles. Yet they wanted to kill him because Jesus didn't align to the expectations of who the Messiah would be. We see some Jews absolutely embrace Jesus and like, yes, Lord, you are my, you are the Messiah. You are. And I thank you for that. I thank you. Yet we see other Jews just walk straight past and miss him completely. Why? As they allowed their expectations to shape their reality. So let's not miss him in the unexpected. And I'll tell you a group that did not miss him. The shepherds, the beloved shepherds of the Christmas story. And they were in the fields nearby when Jesus were being born. And then this angel appears to them and they're surrounded by the Lord's glory. And the angel says this, do not be afraid, but I bring you good news that will bring joy to many. The Messiah, the Saviour, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem. Man, these shepherds would have been ecstatic. Man, they're like, what? The Messiah, this one we've been waiting for our whole life, the generation after generation after generation after generation after generation before us has been anticipating Man, they would have been ecstatic. And and then the angel goes and says this. He says, yeah, and you will recognize him by this sign. Man, there's the shepherds on edge. And this is what the angel says. He says, he will be wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger in the dirt. This this didn't align with the expectations of the shepherds. They grew up in a culture which was expecting this king, this um, high priest, this prophet, this political military figure. They weren't expecting this. This didn't seem quite right. This didn't seem to match up with their expectations. Yet they didn't allow their expectations to shape their reality. And I love the shepherd's response. The angels go up, back up to heaven, and they say, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that the Lord has told us about. They didn't see it coming, yet they didn't allow their expectations to shape their reality. In fact, they went with intention into the obscurity, into the unexpected, into, in it, like in it all, the unexpected and everything, to search for Jesus. And then they found him. <laughs> Jesus was right there in the middle of it all. He was in the unexpected. They just had to look. And it didn't stop there. It then goes on to say, the shepherds returned, yet they were changed, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. They returned, yet changed. They went back to the fields, back to shepherding, Yet, they went back glorifying and praising God. They went back to normality, yet with fresh, God-given insight. And I'll tell you for why. They went with intention, in the obscurity, in the unexpected, and looked for Jesus. And they found him. So what could happen? What could happen if today we went with the intention, just as the shepherds did, looking for Jesus. That in those unexpected places that we didn't think should match up, that we don't expect Jesus to be, we actually looked for him within it. How would that change our life? How would that change our perspective? How would that even change our well-being if we didn't miss him, but we actually saw that in the unexpected he is there? For he's in the unexpected, we just need to 
Look, what could happen? He's in the unexpected. We just have to look. Lord, I thank you that you are in the unexpected. That, that you don't align with our expectations. You are, you're so much higher than that, Lord. And Lord, I pray would you just open our eyes, Lord, to, to, to just go with intention, with that intention of looking for you in the unexpected. And Lord, thank you that as we go, we will find you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are there. You are there in the unexpected, in the middle of it all. Thank you that we will find you as we seek you. Thank you, Lord.